S2 Y'all are funny. Hi guys. All right, I was scrambling to get set up um, cause I was running morning errands and so I'm gonna eat, so don't judge me. But I wanted to make sure I got here on time. So, thank you. I love the hair too, although it's kind of, I need to wash it. I was planning on washing it before this, but I just got home. Um. How's the knee healing? I'm actually getting pretty better. Pretty better. I'm talking with food in my mouth. I'm getting better. Um, I've been training on the track a complete two weeks now. Um, um Jermaine Johnson, I kind of agree with you. Um, Um, that the coverage is like all over the place. So, um, it's interesting. um, it is kind of, uh, all over the place. I don't have any guests today. I thought, um, I tried to get someone over here, but everybody's busy and some people just wanted to watch it in the comfort of their homes and not have to censor themselves, you know. Oh no, don't say that. Why do you feel like the TV coverage is a scam? Thank you to you, Flame. Oh, they're making you pay. Hmm. That's interesting. I feel like um a lot of cable cable TV is moving towards like subscription stuff. So I've I've heard throughout the years that like or over the last few years that cable is going to be non-existent. So I don't know if track and field is moving in that direction and that, you know, you got to subscribe to be able to watch meets and stuff, but it would be nice if some of that money trickled down to us. Just saying. It is on NBC today. Um, so it's on like, it should be, nobody needs cable to watch it today. I would love to have Tiana back on. Um, yeah, depending on what cable packages you have, like if you have the sports package, you should have like NBC, 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 SN, the Olympic Channel. So. Majesty Granson, I've had Allison on too. Hmm. 
I only started to make sure that I'm here before the meat gets started and let people have time to get in here. You didn't miss anything. Besides me stuffing my face. Can y'all hear my TV? Okay, good. I don't want to get flagged for any copyright issues. So just know we're watching it together. <laughs> Hey girl, hey. Shakima has looked strong through the rounds. Um, I think it's gonna be an interesting 400 final. One thing about my race, you never know. <laughs> it's always great competition. Jiggy, um, yeah, what party did you come to? <laughs> we got some hurdles on the track. Blitz one, I'll be here for two hours. We are watching the meet together. Okay, women's 400 hurdles semifinal up first. George Jam. She's been having a pretty good season. I'm here for the lashes. Good choice, good choice. Mm. Okay, Tate. Oh, okay. See, trying to watch with no sound. <laughs> it's not funny, but I thought Jordan uh, fall started. Oh, I was like, who comes to nationals to fall start? Uh, Benjamin Porter is on NBC. Just regular old NBC. No cable, no nothing fancy today. We're on primetime TV. Track and field get some love today. Um, my assessment of my PRP shot, um, it's, uh, my knee is improving. I feel like it took a while for me to like really feel the benefits of the shot. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I also had intense, intense physical therapy. I'm still in physical therapy and heavy treatment. Okay, the race is off. Uh, lane six, who I think is Tate and lane five. They're both out pretty good, pretty strong. Oh, Tate is laying the hammer down. Tate took that first 200 out, but she looks comfortable, so. Let's see how they come home on the home stretch. Marlene now taking the lead. Oh, 
Sandra might have went out a little bit too hard, but she's holding on. Very Patient Race by Marlene. You think Marlene is the one to beat? What about, um, oh my God, <laughs> Sydney. I'm over here stuffing my face. I'm eating um, salmon, green beans, and rice. Um, yes, it is $8,000 for first place. And yeah, we pay the same taxes like everybody else. But here's the bad part. Your, ta your agent gets his cut before you pay your taxes on it. But look at y'all counting our pennies. <laughs> Did Sydney scratch from the 400 hurdles too? I know she scratched from... I thought she scratched from the flat 400. Benjamin Porter... <laughs> I hear you loud and clear. I saw something yesterday and I was really, I'm not going to say what I saw, but I saw an announcement yesterday that had me really kicking myself like, dang, someone pretty much just took my idea. I really, I need to do a better job of um, copywriting my content and ideas. So I'm going to, I'm going to get on that. She scratched from the meat. Sonya does look good. Actually, I'm supposed to hook up with Sonya. I need to get Sonya on tea time. Um, we both live in Austin, but, you know, she's busy wife and mom. I'm busy. Oh, the hurdles are up next. No secret who my favorite is in the hurdles. Who do y'all think my favorite is? Nelvis, yep. <laughs> I didn't know that um, Sydney Scratch. Well, let me let me backtrack. See, I'm trying to eat, watch this, watch, listen to y'all. Um, I didn't know that Sydney Scratch from the meat is what I meant to say. Um, real talk, are you the one on Instagram that asked me that too? I'm not related to Mary J. Blige, but I get it a lot. I get Mary J. Blige, Sierra. Those are the two main ones. A couple of times I've gotten Solange. We're just light skin. Beautiful black woman. Hmm. <sighs> if there's no McLaughlin. I'm gonna go with y'all. I think Sydney might be the favorite. I mean, <laughs> um, Marlene. Thank you, Bryn Morty. Abigail, I already said that I'm uh, eating salmon green beans and rice. Oh, Sydney felt something in her quad. That was smart. You know, I was having this conversation yesterday with, um, my training partner, Michael Tinsley, about um, when you think about our seasons and our competition. Oh, my girl Ashley's on the line. Let's go, Ashley. 
um, we're, we're essentially doing something that, um, follow me here. Our bodies were not made to do. Now, yes, I was born to run, but I'm pushing myself to a limit that like, it's almost like the check engine light comes on basically. <laughs> so, excuse me. Sometimes these things like these injuries or, you know, things peak Sydney has been running at a phenomenal standard this season. So I would imagine that at some point running that fast and to run that fast for a whole season, um, is, is taking a toll on her. Let's go Ashley. Let's go Shakima. I didn't really see who else was in this race. Um, Shakima got out pretty strong, but that's that's her normal race strategy. I'm glad Shamir brought her bows back. Let me tell you something. Um, having been criticized for like the makeup thing on the track, like, do you boo? Do you? Um, and Alicia Monta. Okay, sorry. They look strong. I like the way uh, Shami looks. Come on, Ashley, get in there. Am I supposed to be giving unbiased <laughs> commentary or because I'm clearly cheering for folks? <laughs> All right, somebody already trying to get blocked. Okay, you guys want me to keep it raw. Okay, okay, I will. Um, real talk, what does life look more at the oh god. I, I wanna answer all of your questions, but I'm bouncing back between questions and the meat. Life after um track, definitely family. Like <laughs> I was just talking to a girlfriend today, like family 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 like i have no regrets about my life but um and i've always lived said i've lived my life intentionally and on purpose but um i'm ready to have a family and then <laughs> um why aren't the big names at nationals i feel like i saw that somewhere too I don't know what you mean by big names. I mean, well, I mean, I'd say I don't know what you mean by that. Okay, so we got Georgian, Cassandra Tate, Shamir Little, Kimber Payne, Kaya Seymour, Ashley Spent. Ashley made it in there. Okay, good. And they went away. I can't see. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, that messed me up. <laughs> The big names not being at nationals. Okay, it's a commercial break, so let's let's take the time to chit chat. It's an off year, guys. I mean, I can speak for me personally. I did I just call myself a big name? Um, I intentionally went into the season like feeling as though I was gonna take it easy this year. Um, I'm I'm always gonna train hard, and um, you know, even though I'm injured, I'm still like adamant and intentional about finding other ways to train so that I don't lose fitness, don't gain weight because it's easy for me to get thick gums. <laughs> um, but it was always the plan for me. I'll be 32 in exactly 30 days. It was always the plan for me to take it easy, sprint more. It just so happened that God was like, no, you really going to take it easy. So, um, you know, everyone else, that I think you guys are missing is kind of taking the same approach in that we're not getting any younger um, and just having the foresight to 
think about, you know, what what's important and what's ahead. Um, if I was 24, 25, I would be there <laughs> and healthy. But um, like I said, I I mean, I can't say I definitely planned on being at Nationals, even though I, I you know, decided that it would be an easy year. But I don't even like that word easy, but. But um, the other side of it, too, is, um, you know, going to Nationals is an investment. So I, I honestly looked at it from a business perspective, too. Um, we pay to go to Nationals. No one pays for us to go to Nationals. And it was an investment that I felt like there was no return on, especially not being healthy. So I decided to stay home. Brand Morty, absolutely. We we have to be, um, you know, I'm always screaming self-love. We have to take care of ourselves, take care of our bodies, and listen to our bodies. Um, that's one of the things, like, I was having a, I had lunch with a girlfriend of mine today, or not lunch, but coffee, but anyway, she asked me, like, what happened with your knee? And I was like, it was just chronic, like, and she was like, you really believe that? And I was like, yeah, like, we push ourselves and you know when we feel pain let's go Anika um we try to push past the pain and you know we're taught to be tough and sometimes it's not so good to do those things okay easy easy money easy money My background is New York City. This is a, probably got this for like 50 bucks at Ikea. <laughs> um, but it's it's New York City. Y'all know I'm from New York, so I take New York wherever I go. And I live in like a loft studio apartment. Um, so like my um, floors are stained concrete and it just has like a city vibe so i just felt like this was the perfect piece for my living room so that is my background uh let me scroll back up to see some more of these um from a standpoint uh, from a stand from a fan standpoint i definitely get what you mean and that is something that it's a sacrifice that i do believe we as the athlete eventually have to make if we want to um improve our sport and you know keep the fans engaged because you know when you look at any other sport be soccer football baseball basketball there's a set schedule and there's a set you know who you're going to see you know when you're going to see lebron you know when you're going to see kobe you know when well kobe's retired but you get what i'm saying and um so it does does kind of put a damper on the sport when the big names aren't there so people don't necessarily want to buy tickets or tune in or but you know i guess we as the athlete um you know as part of like sharing our stories and explaining the journey hope that you would understand why we make some of the choices that we make but then also you know, there is that responsibility that we are entertainment and we should provide <laughs> the entertainment that we want, you know, to see the returns on for ourselves, you know? When you're in college, does the university pay? Absolutely not. I mean, no, they cover your living expenses, but you don't get no money in your pocket. <laughs> Alfred Henderson, I'm definitely focused on um, my life after, and I have some big announcements coming up soon, so. Of course I felt like giving up. Like, any anyone who tells you that they never thought about giving up, they lie. Lies. Okay, this is the women's steeplechase, so I'm not very familiar. Let me see who's in the race. Is Coburn? I think Coburn. Yeah, I see her. Um, all right, let me take this time to answer some more questions. Do they, do they pay our entry fees? No. <laughs> 
we pay those. Um, I will say that if you come into the meet at a certain rank, like top five or top something, you do get a reimbursement check for like $800 or something. But by the time you pay for your hotel, your flight, um, your food to eat, your physio, your agent, that you sneeze that like, and that I'm not saying that to sound ungrateful. It just, I'm just speaking facts. Like going to nationals is an investment for us. Thank you, Real Talk. I appreciate that. That means the world. I just, I try my best to be as transparent and honest as I can be. Um, I am a little bit private, but um, I do think it's worth you guys understanding the sacrifice that we make to do what we do. And Brent, I will definitely be here for that 400 final. Like, <laughs> I will say I was a little nervous to do this because um, let me tell y'all a little something, something about me. Um, 2012, when I didn't make the games, I didn't watch the games. I'm not someone that, um, I definitely watch track, but when it's a emotional, like I'm supposed to be there kind of thing, or I feel like I'm supposed to kind of be supposed to be there, it's hard for me, um, to watch. So I definitely had to prepare myself and meditate, <laughs> um, you know how ready i was or open to do this but i feel like i've taken enough time away from you guys and i don't want you guys to feel like i'm not um like i'm gone or you know and i appreciate you guys' love and support so i wanted to do something special and you know kind of interact with you guys in this way take the time to give you guys an update um and then also give you my thoughts on the race or the whole meet actually so yes yeah. so I hope you guys appreciate me doing this because this was <laughs> Stephen Conley is there anyone on Team USA that I don't like I can't say that there is you know and I think <laughs> um some people are probably I'm sorry. You ever look up at the ceiling and notice something in your house that you never noticed before? My chandelier has something funky going on. Like, anyway, I can't say that there's anyone that I don't like. Um, to be honest, I'm not the kind of person that, and this is going to sound terrible, but most times, um, if I don't get along with someone or it's it's a silly misunderstanding a miscommunication uh but i don't I, I was even telling i had a conversation with my girlfriend a few weeks ago and they were like you're lying like i'm not even the type of person that uh will look at someone and be like they're ugly i think everyone is beautiful like i think your insides can make you an ugly person now that much i believe um i think that you can be a nasty enough person to make you an ugly person but i don't go through life feeling like i don't like someone or no i mean we may not gel our personalities may not gel or mesh or but that doesn't mean that i don't like you or i have a problem with you or I, like life is too short and precious to be nah it's not it's not that deep no, I don't think Seal is ugly. <laughs> Something you should know about me, I like really, 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 really black, dark men. So, <laughs> it's actually a hope of mine that I make chocolate babies. So, no. <laughs> Alfred Henderson, thank you. Uh. <laughs> A.M. P.M. Reem was like, please be diplomatic. Don't answer that. You thought I was going to say something. I'm not that girl. I'm just, no. If, if, if somebody's beefing with me, you're beefing with yourself. Like, I'm just not, I'm not her at all. Sorry. That's why I don't think I would be good for, like, reality TV or something. I might be good in the sense that I can't control my facial expressions. <laughs> but, like, as far as, like, being the girl who starts drama or stays in drama, not me.
Mm -mm. Um, let me scroll back up and see what I missed. We are on commercial break here. Um, Abigail, did I play any other sports when I was younger? Um, do I wish I tried any other sport? I did not. Um, <laughs> okay, so you want to come in here being messy. All right, I see you will. Um, <laughs> I tried out for basketball and I was horrible, but I was already running track, at which point I knew that I was pretty decent at track. I was pretty good. I was, I was pretty darn good. And so everybody likes to win. So I didn't make the basketball team, went right on back to track. I do wish that I tried other sports. Um, that's probably the only, um, yes, Will, you are messy. <laughs> you would be great for uh, reality TV. But um, yeah, I do wish I tried other sports, but that's the only regret that I have about my career this far that I didn't like venture out and try other sports. But I mean, I love, I love my sports, so. I feel like you are non-confrontational. I, <laughs> I'm not a confrontational person. Uh, will you give us some tea then? Um, I'm not. I'm not a confrontational person at all. Um, so much so that I think it's one of my downfalls or weaknesses because I will avoid a situation before um, putting myself in a confrontation which then leads to misunderstanding and miscommunication and so that's definitely not a strong suit but i would much rather avoid confrontation avoid argument but yeah What kind of tea do you want me to give the people? Oh my goodness. And um, my fastest 200 time is 2261. Um, and that's why I wanted to focus on the 200 this year because my fastest 200 time is 2261. As for my junior year of college, I ran that 45 minutes after running the 400 final at regionals in like 50 six or something. Like I remember standing on the line and feeling my heart like, and I was just like, <laughs> I don't know if I could do this. But the gun went off and I somehow ran 2261. It was the regional championship um, record too. I'm sure that's gone down by now. Actually, both the times that I ran that day were um, records, but I'm sure those are gone. I, do they even have regionals anymore? Because they don't do NCs the way that they did when I was in college. But um, yeah, so that's why I wanted to focus on the 200 because I feel like I could run 22 low, but I've never had the opportunity to focus on training for the 200. Um, I definitely feel like, oh, we're on the bell lap. Sorry. Emma's got this locked up though. Although somebody's giving her chase. Um, oh, yeah, I definitely feel like I could run 22 low, but I've never been able to train for it. I don't know, Will, are we going to do a live? They want the tea. Um, are there any up-and-coming athletes that you are excited about, like Noah, Christian Coleman? Oh, I'm excited about all of them. I'm excited for the competition of track and field. I think when people tune in, people want to see good races, so they want to see new talent. They want to see veterans. They want to see good races, wire to wire races. So I'm definitely excited for the, for the new, um, yeah, Emma definitely killed it. But Emma's, Emma is just Emma. <laughs> um, am I a fan of Eugene? Okay, Will says soon come. I guess we're gonna do a live soon. What, what's the topic, Will? Um, am I a fan of Eugene? Prefer Sacramento, Des Moines. Um, each place has its place. <laughs> Eugene, we know we're going to get a packed house. Which, by the way, earlier in the, the stream, you guys said that um, 
it didn't look like a packed house. I mean, the back stretch is kind of suspect, but the home stretch is full. But Eugene, you know we're going to get a packed house. Um, Sacramento is hot, but I always run fast there. In Des Moines, I ran 49 there. So, and I won um, USA's there. So, every every place has its, uh, its special place in my heart. I'm not a girl that like, um, you know, some people say, oh, the track is fast, the track is bouncy, the track is this. I'm not that. A track is a track is a track to me. <laughs> Mike Rogers for president. You really coming in here being messy. <laughs> Um, do I have a new, a favorite new track star? Sydney, you, you know, Sydney is my girl. Sydney was actually my roommate in, um, um, Rio. Brain fart. Let me put this plate down. Sydney was my roommate in Rio. And I don't know if I ever shared this. I still have the note. Sydney left me the sweetest note after my 400 final, um, in Rio. And I think that from some of the things that um, like I visited her high school and just I can imagine the amount of pressure and um, just what it's like to be Sydney McLaughlin like she is <laughs> she's about to wreck shop so um, I think that it might be missed that she's actually a really sweet girl and as fierce of a competitor that she is, she's just as sweet. Not to mention the the eyebrows. She knows how to slay some eyebrows. Um, but yeah, she's um she's that's that's my new favorite for sure. Um oh that that would actually be a really good topic, Will. Athlete relationship struggles. That would that would be <laughs> will is on to something okay will wants to drop the tea listen don't let him steal the show <laughs> but that would be uh that would be a good one um J jermaine johnson you actually took the thought out of my mind that would be a good one to do with like ross and sonya um mike jones nope Nope, I'm exactly where I need to be. Um, I was with another sponsor before I got with Under Armour, and I would never, I wouldn't, mm -mm, I'm just fine where I am. <laughs> you good, Will? <laughs> now you good. Okay. We did touch on it a little bit. Me and Kelly did talk, we did, we did talk about that. Thanks for reminding me. Oh, African, you made it. Um, oh, you want us to have our own show. Okay. <laughs> we can do that. That's fine. Nas or Jay-Z? Jay-Z. I would think track stars would date track stars since y'all always together. I think that's exactly why we don't <laughs> date track people because we're always together. I remember people used to think that me and um, Tinsley were like in a thing or whatever and it created such an awkward um, situation because he had a girlfriend and I'm like girl's girl to the end like if I invite him somewhere, I'm inviting his lady somewhere, you know? Um, but yeah, no, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, Will, Stephen Conley, Will is out here shooting his shot with Natasha. The shot has already been shot and made, sweetheart. <laughs> Let me see if y'all caught that tea. <laughs> Can't track track stars be? <laughs> Will said, "What?" I heard you saying that, Will. Okay, men's four hundred hurdles up. Whew. 
Bobby2204. Say it louder so they can hear you in the back. <laughs> they are asleep. <laughs> I'm going for my vet, Batman. But this is going to be a good one. We got Batman. We got the young one from Florida. What's his name? Um, TJ Holmes. Um, Byron, this is going to be a tight race. <laughs> Mike Jones, who is Will Gay Track? Google him. <laughs> don't leave real talk. I don't know. I need to, I need to do a better job of my schedule. Hold on. Let's quiet for the start. Come on, Bat. He's out like he usually does, but is that TJ out in six? TJ's out strong too. Is that TJ? Yes. Yeah, okay. Here we go. Come on back, come on. TJ looks good, but I don't know. I don't know, Bat's trying to sneak up in there. Come on, Bat. Uh-oh, who's this on the outside? 48-22, I knew it was gonna be a fast one. <laughs> we all were wrong, yeah, we were. Um. Okay, what did I miss? I was watching the race. Batman is definitely not winning. Mike Jones, do you still have the same number? Would you rather do a 400 meter hurdle or, ooh, 400 hurdle or 800? I'm gonna go 400 hurdle because I, I go with what's over quicker. <laughs> we were all wrong. Kenny Selman, okay. Good job, he just ran the race of his life. North Carolina. So did TJ maybe, mm, no, he ran his race. 48.51, that's still fast. 48.65, 3.48. Wrong, like two left shoes. <laughs> Benjamin Porter. Will, Benjamin got some questions for you. Is that the sprinter's mantra? Whatever race is over quicker. I don't know if that's the sprinter's um, mantra or what, but I know when I'm in practice and coach gives us an option of like a 400 versus a broken 400, I'm like, just give me the 400. <laughs> I don't want to stop, start and go. Like, just get it over with and done. Like... <laughs> um the race is done on my end caught do you still keep in touch with your usc teammates of course some of my best friends are um from usc so yeah um i have actually two of my usc teammates are on my foundation board and i'm about to add another one to my board um but yeah i keep in, in touch with my um Gamecock family. Uh, BK runs. Hey, Tasha, if given the opportunity, would you have gone pro out of high school? How do you feel about athletes who forego collegiate competition or leave after their freshman year? I don't think that I would have gone pro. I actually think that going college was the best decision that I made. And I'm actually for kids going to college before going pro. Um, I think you should go for at least one year. I mean, I, I, I didn't stay for my four years. I graduated, but I did not compete for four years. Um, but I, I'm a fan of kids going to school and being kids 
and then when the time is right go pro so yeah thank you jakai hayes i hope i said your name right uh joseph Mar scott i do speak about my jamaican heritage um i so my father i'm half jamaican my father is one of seven I have so many cousins that I don't know how many cousins I have. <laughs> um, but yeah, about half of them live here in the States and the other half is still in um, Jamaica. But yeah, I do talk about my, my Jamaican heritage. <laughs> See, you came out and now, now you want to go back into hiding, Will. <laughs> Thank you, Josemar. African, nice. Real track people do understand real track people. Like, we do, we, I mean, we have great conversations, but honestly, I can't say that I know very many, let me think about it. I love Vashti, I love Vashti's um, style. If you ever look at her Instagram, check her out. Her mood board is dope. Um. I'm trying to think what track relationships do I know? I I know some older couples. I know that like um Sandra Farmer Patrick and her husband both ran track. Um Who? Oh, did he now? <laughs> Say it louder, Benjamin. <laughs> <laughs> how often do athletes change coaches and when do you know when it's the right time to change uh it's kind of a hard question oh Kyrie King and Deja they do yeah good call um, Morgan and Marquise, and they are married. Yep. Queen and Will, they're engaged. Get me together. Get me all the way together. <laughs> the Eatons. Yep. Who else? Keep them coming. <laughs> How do you remain the least problematic and have so much tea to spill? What? What do you mean? Tara Davis and Hunter Woodall. Okay, now see, you getting into generation stuff. Like, they are so much younger than me, I wouldn't know. So, but yeah. The Porters. Yeah, yeah, okay, y'all all right, y'all all right. Um, I just know it wouldn't work for me. <laughs> Not that, um, please don't come in here and start no foolishness, McQuay and Natasha, never. Um. <laughs> thank you will i was trying to get back to what that question was so you leave <laughs> um i personally switched coaches like three times in my career so when i went pro i left coach fry and i went down to lance brahman so i was with lance brahman for the 2008 season um and then i left him and went to bobby I was with him for the 2009 season. Um, when I left Bobby, I left Bobby unintentionally. Um, I had went back to Carolina to finish school and um, Bobby Kirsty is in LA. My mom lives in Atlanta. I'm a mom, mama's girl. And I just felt like too far away from home. So I was at South Carolina finishing my degree and I was in the library studying and I sent my mom a text and I was like, don't say anything, but I think I'm staying. So I ended up staying with Coach Fry for two years. Well, things started going sour. 
Uh, the first year I ran decent with Coach Fry, and then the second year things started, you know, like I wasn't wasn't running well. So that was 2011. Um, and then there were some other things going on that I'm not going to, you know. But um, my agent was like, you got to go. And I was like, um, where do I go? Because every time you move, it's not just about the coaching change. Every time you move, you literally start your life from scratch. And so I literally, um, I felt like I had exhausted every option. I mean, you're talking Lance Brahman, Bobby Kersey, Curtis Fry, like those are amazing coaches. And like bouncing from coast to coast around the country, my agent at the time was the one who picked my coach now, who was D2. And I literally came down here on a prayer. I said, God, if this doesn't work, it's not meant for me to run track anymore. And I'm now here six years later. <laughs> um, Arvion Davis, I definitely plan to write a book one day. After retirement, I definitely plan to write several books, actually. But yes. Okay, we got the women's 15 final in here. My girl Brenda Martinez is on. They're coming up. What, they got two more laps or one more? See, I was rambling and I missed. <laughs> um, um what are my thoughts on collegiate athletes killing it at nationals? How is your knee doing? I'm missing the track vlogs. Yeah, I need to do a better with do a better job with the track vlogs. I just felt like I got into a space where um, it was kind of repetitive. I don't want to keep putting the same videos out, um, so I need to get a little bit more creative and get help with filming because it's not easy filming these videos by myself. Um, my knee is doing better. I've been on the track for two weeks now. Um, before I was, oh, 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 we got a scuffle. Okay, Brenda. See, Brenda's a little thug. <laughs> Brenda will fight. <laughs> um, yeah, I was training on like the grass and turf. And so I'm finally back on the track in spikes. So that's good. Um, and then what was the first question? Let me go back. Oh, collegiate athletes killing it. I mean, they always do. There's always fresh and new talent coming out, and we always have to be prepared. I mean, I was once the collegiate athlete killing it that came out. So it's, you just got to be prepared. Like, they're, they're a part of the sport. They're changing the sport. <laughs> Why are you, you dropping tea that, like... <laughs> Yes, I do. My my hope is to be back before the end of the season. I would like to run some meets. Um, we call it part two um, on the circuit. So probably won't. Oh, no. Okay, get back in there, Jenny. Dang, man. They say track isn't a contact sport, but... Uh-oh. Who is this? Come on through, girl. Yes. That is a kick, honey. Oh, who land? Look. All right, you. <laughs> um. Fifty-eight seconds on the lap. Like how, Sway? How? <laughs> And then look, they just walk off. This is what I don't understand about the distance races. We run a 400 and we're laid out. You don't want to see that mixed zone. Like, there's vomit. There's everywhere. And they're just walking around like, how? 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 Okay, Hafrican, thank you for bringing me back. I'm going to, I don't know that I'll be in Diamond League races, but I'm definitely, um, is my TV that late? 
<laughs> um, but yeah, definitely plan on running some meets this summer. Um, no, Hart was never on my radar to train. Um, and he wasn't because of his training methods. I didn't think they would work for me. Um, it's no secret that I like to run fast. I like to train fast. And a lot of his philosophy, like Jeremy and Sonia, from what I understand, did not train in spikes. And so I just didn't, they, you know, all of their training was done pretty much in flats. And every now and again, they got into spikes. So I just didn't think that that was a system that would work for me. Jermaine Johnson, the selection for the Europe versus USA meet, I believe you had to compete at nationals. Um, it not, not a place thing, but I think you had to compete. Um, and then from there, I'm not sure. They definitely sent it out in an email, but honestly, since I know I'm more than likely not going, I've kind of not paid attention to it. But I miss being on the track too. BK runs, um, could I speak about the tactics or difficulty of collegiate athletes coming from nationals and running in USATF nationals, going through rounds, et cetera, advantage or disadvantage? Um, I have a couple of opinions about this. My personal experience was um, that I did NCAAs um, two weeks before USATF nationals. Um, the collegiate athletes, I believe, are sort of at, a, at an advantage at the USA Nationals because their training cycles are different than our training cycles or the professional training cycle. Um, we're training specifically for US Nationals or to peak specifically for US Nationals and the World Championships, Olympics, whatever that championship is. Um, the collegiate athletes are coming off of a hot season from SECs um, or their conference championship, conference championship, I should say, to their regional, to NCAAs, to then coming to nationals. So they're coming in hot. They're coming in. They are peaked, ready to go. Um, so they come in at that advantage. But then, from my own personal experience, I mean, came in hot, and it's a converse. It's not even just my personal experience. We've seen it happen over and over. If you know, depending on the athlete, depending on the coach, depending on the event, you know, by the time they do get to worlds or nationals, they're tired, they're flat. Um, what was a walk in the park <laughs> now isn't so much a walk in the park anymore because, you know, that month and a half in between nationals to um, worlds kind of takes its toll. The body comes back down off of that high that it was on all season. The disadvantage that I do think that the new collegiate athletes are up against, I'm not a fan of how they do the nationals because I don't feel like it's preparing you for this level. And what I mean by that, like when I went to World Youth, when I went to World Juniors, I had three rounds of the 400. Um, when I went to um, NCs in college, I had three rounds of the 400. This system that they have where like now they're running two rounds at regionals and then the last two rounds at nationals i don't think that's preparing you for what's to come you got three rounds <laughs> at nationals at usatf and then you got three rounds at um so I, I do think that that's a bit of a disadvantage but okay um let me go back up yes brenda did make her move a little bit too soon but i think she was trying to get out of that mess that she had gotten caught up in so a part of track um lactic acid okay okay i went back up too far will 2024 be my last olympics i see will answer that for me <laughs> i'm not going that far 2020 is my last 
I did see that 49.80. Sick. Benjamin Porter, thank you. Um, how does an athlete get appointed to participate in Diamond League in a Diamond League race? Uh, there's so many things that go into that from your agent advocating for you to be at that meet, what their relationship is with the meet promoter. Um, it's no secret that a lot of it is politics. But then, you know, what's your rank? What are you running? Um, are you someone that's selling tickets? Are you someone that is going to put on a good race? Is there going to be a good competition? So that's pretty much what goes into it. Um, I am cool with Brenda Martinez. Do Oh, and the second part of your question, do I ever do I plan on ever visiting Trinidad? Um, I do plan on visiting Trinidad and I actually visited Trinidad a lot as a kid. I used to go every summer up until I started running track. So I have very fond memories of um Trinidad and Tobago. My grandparents live in Trinidad. Joe Samara Scott, me too. Couldn't agree more. Hafrik and I agree with you 100%. There is no new bolt. Like, <laughs> there's just new talent. Like, end of story. Stop trying to draw comparisons or... No. New talent. Arvion Davis, do you think Tamari is going to keep improving yet or is she going to burn out? I don't know. That's that's a hard one because um, I, I can't answer that question because I don't know what kind of training she's doing. Um, I do believe that you can overtrain um, the younger athletes and that's what causes them to run super fast and then get burnt out but if she's training like a 14 or 15 year old should be training and running that fast then yeah she's gonna continue to improve i hope that answered the question um uh you get ask yeah we'll answer that one we'll answer that question um half again what did nbc say i missed it what what were you talking about okay and it's it's not about like Lifting weights and I mean, I I started lifting weights um, I think my senior year of high school, but it was very like um, Nothing above body weight high reps um, Nothing to do to to add bulk or size um, I didn't start Olympic lifting until I got to college Why are they counting my dog out who which dog who they count out the fight will they're saying they're looking for someone to fill the void. Oh, Mike Rogers. I don't know. You got to ask them. Oh, my knee. My knee just popped on me. Her coach says she's he's keeping her from weights, just resistance. That I mean, that might be a good plan. Uh, resistance training is actually very, very good. So... Good for Tamari. That is going to catch up with her. I wish I could eat junk. Let me tell y'all something. Since this knee, I have been drinking a gallon of water a day. <laughs> I've been eating nothing but fish and veggies. and Because the, the way, first of all, my metabolism isn't what it was when I was 19, 20. <laughs> and I know that because I'm not training the way that I would normally be training... So I'm not even fooling with it. I can't afford to put no extra pounds on y'all. I can't. Brian? 
My skin is glowing. <laughs> No, I don't train with Allison, but I did that year that I lived in um, L.A. and I was training with Bobby Kersey. We did train together then. Aaliyah Hobbs is a beast, but we've been seeing that for a minute, right? She's been killing it. What are my thoughts on the Everything is Love album? I like it. I do. Um, I'm not a Beyonce stan. I think I've said that over and over and over again. Um, oh, look at my boy Bryce. Hold on one second. Um, I like, uh, yes, I see that, Will. Thank you. Um, what was I saying? What was I talking about? <laughs> no, they haven't run the 400 yet. Oh, the album. Yeah. So, I'm not a Beyonce stan. I'm not. I like Beyonce, I like her music, but I'm not the Beehive. I am a Jay-Z fan. I'm not a stan. Here comes the 400, so let me wrap this up. Oh, why did my stomach just drop like I'm on the line? <laughs> um, but um, no, I like the album. It's pretty good. It's, it's, I actually, um, before this, I was... I, go to this um, recovery place and I sat in the infrared sauna for an hour and I actually listened to their album while I was in there. So I liked it. Mm. Oh yeah, Rihanna over Beyonce all day. My live might shut down now because I said that, but I'm just being honest. There's so many questions coming in. I don't know what to answer. Hold on. Let me, okay, let me go back up. Um, did they ever get the relay selection process down after your blog? They need to have a process going into world championships next year. Here's the thing about that. There is a process. And, um, uh-oh. Am I still live? Or did my computer just freeze? There is a process. And there was always a process in place. It's just for whatever reason, on that day, um, things just went a little haywire. Um, so I will say that, you know, we've had meetings, we've had talks about it, and I've been assured that going forward such a thing won't happen. Um, but, you know, for me, my biggest thing was the communication piece in how the situation was handled and how, um, you know, I've been a part of the team every year since I was for the past 10 years, basically. And I'm not asking for any special treatment. I'm asking that we all be treated equally across the board. But, um, you know, I just didn't feel like I deserved to at the very least hear or find out the way that I did. So that was that. But I mean, I know 
for most people hey michelle hey girl hey um you know there were people that were uh, like just as disappointed as i was that i wasn't running because i know people were expecting to see me but you know the coaches made the decision that they made and they had their reasons for making their decision um but yes we did talk about it and we i mean that that's that's really all i can and have to say about it all right here we go with the 400. my stomach <laughs> Jessica has been, listen, if there's anybody in this field that I'm happy for, it's Jessica and that I'm rooting for. And I'm going to tell you because I remember seeing Jessica come from, come out of Texas A&M and looking at her and being like, dang, she's going to be a problem. And um, she, I think, is truly a testimony of you just stick with it. Just stick with it. You don't know what, what can happen tomorrow. So I'm really happy for the breakthrough season that she's ha having and I'm definitely um pulling for her today but it's gonna be a hot race because <laughs> Shakima's running well it's, it's, it's gonna be oh my stomach <laughs> Akolo closes crazy and Akolo kind of had us nervous because she wasn't running that great but she looked pretty good yesterday in the semi Mm-hmm. Um 249s over. See, Will, now you're talking that gambling stuff that I don't know. <laughs> I can't show you guys the screen. I will get uh copyright flagged. Oh, my stomach. I can't take it. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. Ellis is another one who, yeah, you can't sleep on Ellis. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I can't talk. <laughs> oh, I'm here for Shakima's ponytail. Yes, come through. Shakima's out. Lane six is out as well. Okay. Oh no, that's Jessica. I'm tripping. That's Jessica who's out. Okay, Shakima's coming now. Arcola. Woo, that race is in the middle of the track, guys. Uh, my stomach. I can't take it. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, she about to. <laughs> it's gonna be fast, y'all. Forty. Forty-nine-five. Ooh. 
I was nervous too. What did what did uh Jessica run? Good job, Shakima. You guys called it. Most of you guys were saying Wembley. She ran a she ran a patient race too because um Jessica and Akolo got out pretty strong, but she ran a pretty even front half of her race and then she just she laid it all out on that home stretch. I know there were quite a bit of, um, or not quite a bit, but there were a couple of 50 points yesterday. You do have to wonder um, if that took something out of their legs. But I, I want to see the rest of the times. What did they run? Okay. Oh, Jessica, so close! 50.8, 37, 65. Congratulations, ladies. Oh. I gotta get my life together. <laughs> yeah, Jessica has to break 49, I mean 49, 50 point this year. She has to. Uh. Kamari Williams, why do girls split their hair back on the start line and then let it fall right back to um so honestly you have to flip it out of the way to see the line for you to put your hand down because your your hand has to be behind the line so it does seem a little van uh, uh, like a little vanity and it is good for the camera but <laughs> you got to be able to see the line and then once you're down um honestly if it falls again you really don't even feel it because by that point you're zoned out on the race so <laughs> <laughs> uh victor condrop i mean qualifying for the relay is the relay is qualifying for the individual is top three relay is top six so i mean that's just yeah, I guess qualifying for the relay would be easier, but everybody is gunning for the individual spot, and then the relay is just the afterthought. <laughs> okay, flipping her hair mid four by four shawty is tripping. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah, Shawnee is just, Shawnee is killing it she's dropping them 21s like they're nothing which is kind of scary because i see i see what they're doing um it was kind of my plan this year she's running those 200s and she's getting hella fast so y'all think my first 200 is fast that first 200 for her next year 23 flat for that first 200 is gonna be a cakewalk for her like that's what you guys don't realize about when like you're looking at, oh, you're going out so fast, you're going out so fast. No, if I can run 22.6, 23.5 through the first 200 is not fast. So, yeah. Thank you, Benjamin. Oh yeah, yep. Noah, uh, Shakima, Shawnee. Tori, um, I believe McQuay is a part of that, but McQuay obviously isn't at Nationals either. But yeah, yeah, that, that camp, they down there working. Um, Josemar, it's not like a cruise control, but more of a maintain, um, what you built up on the, the first, first hundred. My salmon is cold as hell, but I gotta finish it. I'm hungry. My breaks are six weeks out of the year from September to November. And then um, Sharika will be back. Actually, I'll be on Sharika's channel too. Sharika has set her channel up. 
but she has to get going um on um her channel yeah um that that quick that comment just went by but Sydney definitely does look very easy when she runs. She kind of reminds me of Allison. Allison is one of those people that I believe, um, you, you, if you looked at Allison just running with no sound, no clock, no, you would not believe she's moving as fast as she is <laughs> at all. So, Alfred Henderson, what's your problem? You about to get blocked? Peyton W. Um, I'll have whoever wants to be on the um on tea time. Jumpers, hurdlers, whoever wants to come through. My mom texted me and said she was nervous like I was running too. <laughs> oh, the one with Olivia and Tynia was really, um, I felt like it was insightful and informational and kind of vet to I don't want to say rookie. I feel like that's they're they're definitely not rookies. So help me out with that word, but from big sister to little sister. I love Queen too. Queen is dope. However, I'm going for my girl Sharika in this race. Sharika Nelvis all day. Hey, right, let me give y'all a joke. So <laughs> um Sharika and I, y'all know we wear wigs. <laughs> So I had on a wig similar to um, what she's wearing now. And uh, a couple weeks ago, we went, we met at a bar actually to watch um, NCAA's. And um, so we were sitting next to each other. And when you guys know when me and Sharika are, are together, we're like two giggly little girls. Like it's like we're 15. I'm fine because when people, you know. Say I look young. I accept. I receive. Um, but anyway, so she went back a couple days after we, um, you know, we're watching the meet or whatever. And the bartender was like, um, so you were the one sitting on the right, right? I don't know why people swear up and down me and Sharika look alike. Like, people think that we're sisters sometimes. Uh, I've walked into a store once. I'm not going to name the store, but... I walked into a store and the sales lady was like, oh my God, are you Sharika's sister? And I was like, no. She's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I was like, no, it's fine. Cause I know exactly who you're talking about, but no, she's not my sister. And no, we don't look alike. <laughs> right, African, we do not look alike. I don't have a wig horror story. Although, right now, that's why this hair is down. My sister needs to touch the glue up. But I got to wash this and, you know, go through all of that. Ooh, Bri. Bri, Bri is just, she's just such a championship runner, too. Like, Bri is one of those athletes that just knows how to turn it on. And, yeah, I do agree that she did get a raw deal, in my opinion, last year but you know the rules are the rules i just feel like the rules need to be reevaluated and how we report on um suspensions or infractions needs to be handled a little bit more responsibly but but yeah i do think Bri got a, a raw deal last year especially in comparison to what some other um offenders got yeah I don't like practicing in flats. It's harder. I do not like, mm -mm, I like practicing in spikes. <laughs> Shh. 
Sharika is the Cardi B of track. I don't know how I feel about this. <sighs> um, next big, next big thing, female sprinters, hundred and two hundred. Um, I think Aaliyah is gonna be a problem. Um, Deja Stevens, um, I, I just think Deja needs a little bit more time to adjust to, you know, competing at this level. Um, cryotherapy, uh, I mean, it's getting a little bit easier. I actually did cryo today and then I got in the sauna, which I don't know if I want to do that again because, or maybe, maybe it did work, but I got in the, um, the cryo chamber, did it for three minutes, of course. And then I got in the sauna and normally when I get in the sauna, I start sweating immediately. It took 25 minutes for me to start sweating today. So yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a fair assessment. I've kind of been talking about, with the exception of Raven and um, Phyllis. Phyllis um, is, is doing her thing. I think um, cryotherapy will definitely help shin splints, especially... Um, since there's really not much you can do for shin splints besides ice and change your shoes and um, possibly change the surface that you're running on. You're probably running on something, a surface that's too hard and that's what's called, or your shoes are worn down and that's what's causing the irritation on your shins. Oh yeah, Sharika is the bomb.com. Yo, Jenna came for me with that. She's not far off me. I was like, little girl, if you don't have a seat. <laughs> now y'all got me singing. Um do you know? You know, I was asking somebody about English the other day. She has been mighty quiet. Um, I hope she's doing all right. Let's send out some smoke signals for um, English. Let us know how you're doing, girl. Oh, Vicky. Oh, I would love it if you could stay too, but make sure you uh, pass them exam. Come back and tell us how you did. <laughs> Uh oh, is my did my computer die? Oh, <laughs> thought my computer died. Um, African, I like that assessment. Anyone else feel women's track is better than men's, or is it just me? Cause men's it's usually the same three people in each event meddling while women it's so much more chaotic and wild we are pretty darn competitive y'all know i'm everything for women so i'm with that um but yeah i know for the 400 i can say that like legit you never know <laughs> it's always a toss-up it's always a good wire to wire conversation i've been in races where from first to eighth eighth place we've all run 50 point like yeah women's track we're definitely competitive so when they say that it's more fun watching men y'all make sure y'all speak up for us and say no actually the ladies bring the drama <laughs> Yeah, like who who wants to think like nobody wants to watch a movie knowing how it's going to end, right? Like everybody wants to be surprised. Everybody wants to have like a, I mean, like I get that you want your favorite athlete or team to win, but you want a good show. So
Gabriella, I did not get to say goodbye to Hayward, but it's all good. <laughs> it's all good. Shawnee does win pretty often. She does. We do bring the entertainment. We bring the flair, <laughs> the cute uniforms, the bright lipstick, and then great competition. We bring it. All right, let's, let's get back to the track. We've been talking for a long time. Men's 400. Okay, I got a little bit of a pit, but not as bad as the women's 400. <laughs> But I'm, I'm a little... <sighs> Breathing techniques. This is going to be a fast one, too. Um, I don't know Allison's season, but, I mean, she's been competing. And, um, yeah, I don't know what her schedule is. But I'm sure she'll be at a few, a few more meets this summer. But I, I think she's kind of on the same... Um, you know thought process as I am that like you know it's a year to kind of give the body a break as much as you can while still doing your job you know but yeah oh my god Jermaine how do I feel about Shelly every time I see a race like I just saw a race I don't know if she ran it yesterday or whatever and she ran 11 on that first of all she shot out of the blocks like she has the Shelly Ann start. Like, I love it because I just oh God, get it out. Like, I'm just, I'm so excited. I think like she's just proving that, yeah, you can have a family. You can, you know, oh, he was all in the inside lane. Oh, how did I miss that? Um, but yeah, she's busting that like, I'm a wife, I'm a businesswoman, and I'm a mom, and I'm still killing it. Like, I love it. I love it. Shellyanne is, she's, she's boss. Boss for sure. Uh, RV on your question about going pro, I was having this conversation with someone yesterday too, that, um, the, the pro term in track and field is, is one that's very loose. Like what defines a professional in track and field? And that's something that we've been trying to define for a while. And we're going to have to come back to this because the gun is up or they're getting in the blocks. <laughs> Well, um,
Yeah, Houston is, is having a, a great year. They are. I kind of wanted that for Cherry. Man, that last stretch, boy. Y'all just don't know what that last stretch feels like. Um. <laughs> speak your mind. Speak your mind. Um. I was, I was hoping for a, a bit of a faster race, to be honest. Um, congrats to Kamari. Um, I wanted I wanted Cherry to take that. I did. Um, but I heard Sonya saying it. That's why you, you got to run the final. You can't give it to who came in with the best time. So... What was I speaking about before? There was something that I was talking about and I was like, I gotta come back. Oh, the pro thing. So, you know, once, pretty much once you graduate from college or you've exhausted your collegiate eligibility, pretty much everyone just says, oh, I'm pro now. But a lot of people that say they are, are pro um, don't have any major sponsorship um, or their you know, still having having to work to support themselves to do this. Um, and then essentially, besides your major shoe sponsor that you might be team Under Armour or team, I'm not going to give nobody else no other love, but, um, you know, besides that, you're not really on a team until you qualify for the team that summer. And then, of course, there's like this year where there's no um, team or, you know, indoor team or, you know, whatever. So the professional term in track and field is one that um, it's come up quite a bit at our annual meetings of like, how do we define a professional track athlete? What is a professional track athlete? Um... Victor, how many titles have I won? I don't know. My mom will probably come in somewhere and tell me, but. <laughs> ben Taylor, I know that feeling. I fell in, um, after the Olympic trials. Um, I remember when I walked off the track, or not walked off the track, but later on, Atta was like, why did you throw yourself across the line? You made the team. And I was like, throw myself across the line. Like, I literally, my legs gave from underneath me. I ran the race of my life to get on that team. <laughs> so, I know exactly what that feeling is. Would I ever knock someone off the track if they tried to cut inside of me? What do you think? You, what what you think? <laughs> the sport drink of my choice? Honestly? Mm, I can't say that I have one um, for any particular reason i mean i feel like some of them have way too much sugar and i i try to watch my sugar so um you know but i i mostly drink water and i guess you could say coffee because i i really only drink water coffee tea and if i do drink juice it's like fresh squeezed pressed juice it's not like store, store bought tons and tons of sugar in it um, so like I'll show up to weight room with a cup of coffee and my coach will be like, not my coach, but some of my friends will be like, how can you drink coffee? And, but I don't drink my coffee with milk. I drink like, I don't drink milk at all actually, but I drink uh, black coffee. So if I had to say a sports drink, I mean, the caffeine kick is great before a workout. So the 400 from Rio probably isn't on YouTube because of copyright reasons. It's the only assumption I have. Benjamin Porter, you were, oh, wow. Benjamin Porter, you just dropped something heavy on us there. You were an amazing participant and supporter. Thank you very much. And 
I wish you all, I wish you health and wealth. Um, please get better and I don't curse, but F cancer. Well, I just lied. I do curse, but I don't curse on this stuff. <laughs> Olympics they were I mean at first it was kind of like oh what are they booing but then we figured out that that's actually their cheer it wasn't like they were actually booing people so um what do I think of plant-based diets I think they have their place um I can say that I've never tried a plant-based diet but I have tried to go completely um meat free and I ended up getting hurt so what I do now is I try to eat more fish, but I do eat meat. So like actually for dinner last night, I had a cheeseburger. Um, but I normally, throughout the week, I only eat fish. You saw that I was eating fish, but I do have like one or two meat meals throughout the week because the level that I'm training at is just impossible to make it or to, or to survive off of um, a plant-based diet or um you know strictly fish um victor what were your thoughts at the rio olympics 400 meter final at the last hundred i don't have any thoughts um i think the only thing that i can say is that when i cross the line I thought I was in fifth and then when the results finally popped up on the board and I saw that I was fourth like that was I was just it was like a punch in the stomach but I don't when the gun goes off there's not much that I think about like I really go into autopilot um in fact I'm trying to remember the race I don't remember it yeah <laughs> that that feeling of like being in fifth is the only feeling that i remember from the race like i remember standing on the line and i remember i have like this checklist that i go through my mind before every race of like what i need to do and you know but once that once that gun goes off like i'm just so i don't i don't have any thoughts Matt Centrowitz is on the line. The questions are slowing down. Am I starting to bore you guys? Do you guys want to end the live? What else? No, we still have Sharika's race. We can't. We can't go. We have to at least stay on until the hundred, the women's hundred hurdles. Oh, thank you, Kamari. I appreciate it. <laughs> you cried i cried too actually so i remember um i remember let's go matt i remember like i laid there on the track for a while and i just i just i just i remember i kept looking at this board like is this real like came this fourth to get four this far to get fourth like i was so gutted but i held it together and I remember going through the mix zone. And I, I do remember when I was sitting on the side of the track, like I looked over and I saw my mom and uh, my brother. And um, my brother and I are kind of like, I don't know. I just remember I got to the back and my mom, my brother, my cousin had surprised me. My grandparents were there. My uncle was there. And I remember my brother, I looked at my brother and that's when I lost it. And he just grabbed me and held me. And um, so I, I cried for a little bit. Um, and my grandfather cried. I think my mom might have shed a tear or two as well. Um, and then like I wiped my tears and my doctor was with me. My, um, my chiropractor that I travel with, he was with me. 
So he walked me to the bus to get back to the village. Michelle had already texted me and was like, where do you want me to meet you? And she went and we had um, dinner together in the village. We didn't say any words, but it was just the physical presence of being there for me. Um, but yeah, I cried. I boohooed. But I mean, I, I, ooh, I'm about to boohoo now. <laughs> but I had my brother. Like, I mean, I, of course I had my whole family, but I remember feeling my brother's embrace. Like, it's cool. We still love you, you know? So... Stephen Connolly, why do you think so many athletes are religious? I don't know if it's common in America or if it's disproportionate with athletes and non-athletes. Um, I mean, I can only speak for myself. I grew up in a religious home. I was raised Catholic, although I'm not a practicing Catholic anymore. I definitely believe in God. I believe in the Bible. and um, But I also see the beauty in other religions as well, like... I see the beauty in Islam. I see the beauty in Buddhism. Um, Jenny Crawford one of, is one of my great friends and she practices Buddhism. And I love, like when we sit and talk about some of her practices and her faith, I actually really like her, her um, belief system. So for me, I mean, I, I totally believe in God and I totally believe in the sacraments that, you know, the Bible puts forth. But for me it's more of a spiritual connection and um being a positive light in the world and i do believe that there's power in, in words and so i don't know i can only speak for myself i don't i don't know about that i don't know how many times i have to say this but yes 2020 is that that's that's why i'm being so cautious this year and i i did not push myself come on matt come on matt I did not push myself to, you know, risk it and go to nationals, make my knee worse. Like, no, I'm preserving myself for the next two years. Good job. Redemption for Matt. I love it. I love it. Um. How closely are you guys affiliated with other athletes that have the same sponsors? I would say it's more of a personal thing. Um, and for me in particular, I'm, I'm especially closer to the people that I train with. Um, but then there, there are also people that I'm close to that, you know, Under Armour doesn't have a, a, a huge roster. Um, so it's not like, you know, but I mean, I'm close with Michelle. I'm gonna be in her wedding. Um, but I'm close with Michelle. I'm close with Eric Kennard, um, Tyson. So it's it's not a sponsor thing. It's just who we vibe with, who our um, you know who our relationships are with. But of course, you know the ones that we're with every day. That's I would say the ones that we're closer to. Sorry, I was <laughs> listening to what Matt has to say. Um, Arvion, your question about the athletes moving to Austin. I'm actually kind of excited for it. I'm excited for it for tea time purposes. 
I when I get my life together, I promise I'm gonna go to every athlete in Austin's house and we're gonna do tea time. And I want to take tea time to like you know let's let's go in the kitchen. What you cooking? How you eating? How you living? Like that's how I really want to do tea time. So um, I'm excited. It's like a fresh young crew that's coming too, and I think you guys are certainly interested in hearing about and from them. So I, I think it's dope. I mean. I've kind of had a struggle with Austin since I've been here because I'm a homebody. Don't really know many, very many people besides um, my training partners. I mean, I do have some other friends. My best friend just moved to Austin too, so that's been great. But for the track community to be expanding, I, I'm, I'm, it's dope. I'm excited for it. Never did hurdles. My mom always said that she wishes I would have tried the hurdles. I think I did try and... My coordination was just not there. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I was just like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> My mom said I can still try. <laughs> Christian Taylor is just an athlete. Listen. You can't coach a dog, right? And Christian Taylor is just one of those people. Like, it's either you have the dog in you or you don't. And Christian Taylor, he's just one of those people. Christian hopped on the 4x4 at World Relays a few years ago, and he ran the 4x4 in college. So when people see it, they're kind of like, what? What is... And Christian's like, I've been doing this. I ain't new to this. Like, <laughs> so... Ashley, you in here getting them all the way together. Yes. Courtney, Morla K, Ashley, they'll be training with Tanja, which I'm really not sure what Tanja's move is going to be and if they're going to move with her or what. I think I've heard through the grapevine that because her daughter is in high school, perhaps she will um, let her daughter finish school before moving. But I don't know how true that is. So I don't want to, I'm not out here putting out rumors. So. Ernest Bell, do I think I would ever coach? I don't want to coach, to be honest. Um, I did take on a client yesterday. Someone asked me to help them with their 40 time. And so I can see myself doing one-on-one -on -one sessions like that, um, or maybe doing, um, you know, two or three people at a time, a couple times a week. But I don't see myself do being like a full-time collegiate coach recruiting nah i don't mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm, no <laughs> yeah victor i definitely plan on running some two two hundreds this summer um hurdles are on the raise let's go sharika are on the race on the track yeah dawn has declared this her final lap well she, she doesn't take laps around the track that's not what she said right <laughs> she declared she said it's her final season all right Corey carter let's go this is gonna be a good race but sharika is winning sorry not sorry Come through with the purple lipstick. Yes. 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 Okay. She gave us a little wiggle. <laughs> Ooh, Manning. I don't know. Wait. Help me out. What do, do they have the same? Um, not the same, but opposite lead legs. Ooh, I don't think they like being next to each other. See, this is what the championships are about, right? Because lane five. Hmm, this may actually fare well for Kenny. She might be out of the mess. But um, one of the things with the hurdlers, depending on what their lead leg and... Okay, queen. 
Yes. Flip that hair. Okay. I'm here for it. But they can bump each other based on, um, you know, having opposite lead leg trail legs if they're next to one another. So, um, but I feel like Sharika and, um, I mean, at this point, at championships, you have no control over any lanes. You can't say that you want to be next to this one or not next to that one. This is what, going back to what Sonia said earlier, this is why we got to run this race. You got to withstand. All, whoa, is this the only collegiate in this final? Okay, hold it down, hold it down. Ah, my stomach. I feel like this, like the 400 again. <laughs> Okay, Sharika. Come on, Sharika. Come on, Sharika. Oh, God. Come on. Get up. You got to turn it on. You got to turn it on. Come on, Sharika. 12.46. Okay, so Kenny did it. 12.46. I, I felt like that was a good position for Kenny. Okay, they ran into a headwind. Sharika did finish strong, but that first part of the race. Is that Wallace sitting on the track? It sure is. Let's see the replay. All right, let me look at the whole race now, because at first I was just looking at Sharika. Christina Manning was actually leading for a little bit. Then Kenny came on. Oh. How fast do I think I can run a, um, a 800? I don't want to know, to be honest. <laughs> to be honest. Um, the fastest I've gone is like 208. 208, 207. That was a good race. Your hands up. <sighs> you then that now the the yeah women's hundred hurdles USA <laughs> y'all talking about the four hundred. I don't want no parts. <laughs> Women's uh, 100 meter hurdles. I mean, year after year after year after year. It's just tight. It's tight, tight.
but yes, Dawn has had an amazing career and kudos to her for gracefully taking her final, I don't know, if, I don't think this is the end of her season. I think she's definitely going to go on to run the rest of the summer. This isn't her last race. Oh, I haven't thought about that. What's like, what's that going to feel like for me? Like knowing, because I'm definitely thinking like, okay, 2020 is it. Go on, have a family, you know, but I've never thought about like what that last race would actually feel like, you know, probably will cry because I'm a cry baby. Yes, go out on top, sis. I, <laughs> I agree with that. Oh my goodness. I feel like I answered this question, these two questions over and over and over. I'm planning to run the rest of the summer. Um, I may go get a second opinion on my knee, but based on how I feel, I don't feel like the doctor is going to tell me that I can't run for the rest of the summer. So yes, I'm running for the rest of the summer as well as 2020 will be my last championship. Mike Jones, I'm going to tell you why you're wrong that Dawn should have retired last year. After winning a medal, your earning potential goes up. And what that means is because you've won a medal, um, your appearance fees stack. <laughs> so if Dawn were to not run this year, she would have left a lot of money on the table. So... I think business-wise, she made the right choice to come back and run. <laughs> I'm just saying. But I'm going to keep, let me keep it real with y'all. Because as much as I say, let me win a 2020 gold medal. And I'm sitting up here talking about, yeah, 2020 is it. That's it. My uh, strength coach kind of checked me on that the other day too. Like, yeah, you say that, but oh, it's five o'clock. Okay. But anyway, he's like, yeah, you say that, but you win that medal in 2020. You going to leave that money on the table 2021? <laughs> so, okay. I'm going to give y'all five more minutes and then I'm out because I stayed on with y'all for two hours to watch this meet. And I appreciate y'all for hanging out with your girl. Uh, I think I haven't peaked either. I'm with you, Joe jo Samar. Like, I haven't, um, I've equaled my personal best a couple of times, a few times, but I haven't run faster than my personal best. So I, I feel like it's time. <laughs> it is time. Um, no, there won't be a watch party tomorrow. I specifically chose today to do the watch party for the 400 final. Um, but I will do a better job of doing more lives. Um, and now that I know that you guys like these watch parties, maybe we'll do some Diamond League watch parties if I don't, you know, if I'm not competing at the next one or whatever. Um, but yeah, this, this was actually kind of fun. So maybe we'll do a Diamond League watch party. <laughs> Boyfriend tag. Okay. I don't even know if I want to do like he. Yeah, we're like total opposites. So <laughs> I'll just say that. <laughs> uh, oh my God. Now y'all. So guys, okay. So you guys were watching the meets because nothing was coming in for a while. Now I can't keep up. <laughs> yes, please say hi. Come give me a hug. I, I'm, I'm not that girl. Yeah. Um... Alfalfa, um, check out my, um, go, go, either go to my Twitter or my Instagram and my agent's information is in there and we can work out like if I can visit your school. Um, see y'all, y'all not gonna come up in here and trying to get me into no mess. Um, okay, let me scroll up because they were coming in super fast. So let me see. And let me turn, let me mute the TV because now what's this? Okay. 
yeah, I believe in 48 too. Bobby, I appreciate you for being here for the full two hours. I've been here for two hours too. <laughs> I'm really good friends with Karan. Actually, fun fact, when I lived in LA, when I was training with Bobby Kersey, Karan and I were actually roommates. And his mom lived with us too. And she cooked breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Oh my God, it was the best setup. She made us breakfast before we went to practice. <laughs> when we came home from practice, lunch was ready. Like it was the best setup. Um, no, Allison's career is a little bit longer than mine. Allison is a year older than me. So what would have been her freshman year of college was my senior year of high school. But then I then did three years of college and then became a professional. So I think she's like four years ahead of me professionally. Ben Taylor, I'm so glad that you love this watch party. I loved it too. I will definitely do more. Um... Um, Christine was definitely, um, we always, the thing we always knew about Christine was that Christine was a championship runner. So like, even when Christine wasn't having per se the best season, when we got to a championship, Moscow is the perfect example. Like she was not running well that season, but <laughs> we got to Moscow and we were like, girl, where you been? Christine. Yeah. She knows how to turn it on, um, for the championship. Okay, I think that's it. And um, thank you guys. Oh, you smile when I answer your comment. That's so sweet. Um, yes, I have a landline. Anytime someone hears that phone ring, they're like, you have a landline? Um... <laughs> um okay yeah go study for your exam thank you guys for tuning in this was fun believe it or not i actually missed you guys so and now the awkward how do i end it thing <laughs>